Hi, I'm Bill Sang from Faith Presbyterian Church, and I'm here with my wife, Melissa. We would like to thank you for joining us for today's sermon. We encourage you to listen in and also hop over to iHeartRadio, YouTube, Buzzsprout, or Rumble to hear more messages during your week. We hope you enjoyed today's sermon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. One can argue that Lou Gehrig's farewell speech was one of the most touching announcements in all of history. You remember his words. Fans, for the past two weeks, you have been reading about the bad break I got. Yet today, I, can, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of this earth. I have been in ballpark 17 years and have re never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. Look at these grand men. Which of you wouldn't consider it the highlight of his career just to associate with them for even one day? Well, today we are talking about the Apostle Paul's heartfelt farewell. The Apostle Paul had a bad break. He was wrongfully accused of a crime he did not commit and was spending the remainder of his days inside of a dungeon until the day he was executed. And yet, he found the courage and strength to be able to pen the words, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. How was it that the Apostle Paul could be so strong in the face of certain death. Well, let's just say this was not Paul's first rodeo. He had been in prison before, and it was never a luxurious experience. Despite the fact that he had been in situations like this before, this one was considerably worse. His dungeon was known as the House of Darkness. The historian Sallust used these words to describe this dungeon. Neglect. Darkness, stench, hideous, and terrifying. It would be enough to make anyone go mad. But one of Paul's most encouraging letters was also written while he was in prison. We call it the Book of Philippians. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 11 through 13, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul points out in 2 Timothy that he is cold and he feels abandoned, but he looks forward to his passage into God's kingdom. In verses 14 through 16, he wrote, At my first offense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Westminster Catechism asks, What is the chief end of man? The answer is that man's chief end is to glorify God and to live with him forever. When a teenager asked Billy Graham what surprised him most about old age, Billy responded, the brevity of life. Billy Graham's advice to people, believers particularly, was, I urge each of you to invest your lives, not just spend them. Each of us is given the exact same amount of seconds, minutes, and hours per day as anyone else. The difference is how we redeem them. You cannot count your days, but you can make your days count. Graham's advice is good. Invest your lives in what matters most. I firmly believe that your days are numbered from the day you are born. Your life will not end a second before God intends. His purposes will be fulfilled through you. All the same, we are called to prove the genuineness of our faith. In October of 2018, in Chengdu, China, Pastor Wong of the underground church known as Early Rain Covenant Church asked his congregation that if their church all of a sudden disappeared from the city of Chengdu, would anyone miss them? Three months later, 
Their church was shut down. Pastor Wong, his wife, and 100 of their congregants were arrested. Pastor Wong was accused of inciting subversion, meaning that they were undermining the authority and the power of the state. He was sentenced to nine years in prison. His personal possessions were confiscated, and his political rights were revoked for three years. I'm sure they probably offered Pastor Wong an ultimatum, such as, if you stop preaching about Jesus, or if you stop teaching that God has ultimate authority, or maybe they just said something like, would you just do what we tell you to do? There are times we need to decide that earthly consequences are of no threat to us. This is our witness, that when the world threatens us for merely standing for the cross of Christ, we stand boldly in the gap as intercessors between our oppressors and the judgment seat of God. The bottom line is that all people, Christians and non-believers, will face death and go before God. The most important thing is that you ask yourself right now, am I ready? And I'm not asking if you're doing all of the right things or if you are loved by everyone. This is between you and God. What I'm asking is have you grown to love the Lord Jesus? Do you acknowledge him as your personal Lord and Savior? You might have something standing in your way from acknowledging this reality, but let me conclude with a brief story that I've heard. There was a man who had joined the Hell's Angels. Naturally, this guy was rough, tough, and crude. Then the day came that his wife gave birth to a son, and this nearly transformed his life. And that is until his son came down with an, an illness and passed away. This biker eventually became bitter and angry with God. Preachers and evangelists were not welcomed on his doorstep. And whenever they did come to him, he would insult them and oppress them and say all sorts of nasty things to him. And he would cap it off with, if God is so good, why did he take my little boy from me? Well, one local preacher hadn't received that memo and happened to see the man across the street with his biker friends. He walked up and wanted to share the gospel and opened himself up to being scolded. And of course, the man wrapped it up with, If God is so good, why did he take my little boy from me? The preacher looked straight into the eyes of the biker. With confidence, he declared, Sir, I do not know why God has taken your little boy from you. But if you want any hope of ever seeing him again, you would be on your knees, confessing your sins, praying forgiveness, and asking Jesus into your heart. The biker fell to his knees, sobbing. In a moment of both grief and joy, he welcomed Jesus into his heart. Don't let your final farewell be a goodbye. It is my hope and prayer that for each and every one of us, it will be nothing less than a see you later. I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's sermon. Again, my name is Bill Sang from Faith Presbyterian Church. You can join us for our Sunday service at 1030 in the morning on Sundays. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.